I've traveled around France and I've seen the beautiful vineyards and the, you know, those hills that just fall into the river and, and, and the grapes growing on the side, and that's exactly what's up there. It's basically this hill just rolling into the water and the, the vines growing alongside. I, I couldn't believe it. I was I couldn't believe my eyes, and I was you know everybody's got to go see this place. It's just it's amazing. The Finger Lakes are just gorgeous. In New York State, you have glaciers, which have created such a swath of incredible terroir, and it's it's not just about wine. It's about anything that could be grown in New York State, and the thing that really defines the Finger Lakes, which is an incredible wine region, is the depth of the lakes, and they're bottomless. The proximity to the water moderates the temperature, so cooler summers, warmer winters, the majority of the lakes don't freeze as we all think they will. Um, in terms of the soil itself, you know, sandy loam over shale, am I tasting that? I'm not so sure. I know it allows for great drainage, so that's perfect for grape growing. I've been really lucky to work a couple harvests up there and get to know winemakers and winery owners. Uh, I was working on uh, the west side of Seneca and I was out in the fields of Riesling and it's just a different soil composition. It's not better or worse, it's just not so many stones and um, the, earth, the earth had a different color. But I think the winemakers are really tapping in and understanding these things on a deeper level and studying the soil and it's really exciting. And I would say now, more than ever, there is I don't know what a pre-revolution is called, but it's a very small but perceptible movement up north towards overt quality in the wine.